Preacher here. Join me for God's word on my heart. Red Rage here. It's time for God's word on my heart. You know what God's put on my heart is this. As Christians, we need to live as Christians. And what does that mean? What does it mean to be a Christian? It means Christ is within you. It means to be Christ-like. So that means the way I used to live, I need to put away. And I need to learn to live in the way that Christ would have me live. And as Christians, we call that maturing. Grow, growing as a Christian. None of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. Some of us, as we grow as Christians, we're taking one step forward and two steps back. But as long as we're continuing to grow, to move forward, we're doing all right. Sometimes as Christians, we think that we've learned enough and we tend to stop growing. And if we stop growing, then we've uh, messed it up because we start regressing. We start just taking steps back. And so to continue to work on your life as a Christian is important because we're here to help other people, to impact them. So we get into Colossians chapter 3. We can see a little bit about growing as a Christian. It says, living as those made alive in Christ. Starting in verse 1. Since you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. So, you know, that, that one there, that, that means a lot to me. Because I watched my children, or even me when I was younger, I used to live for every new video game or TV show or movie that was coming out. And it was always, I want the next bigger and better thing. And my mind was always on things here. And I watched my kids do the same thing. It's, I, I think it's a natural thing. But we're to be setting our mind on the fact that these things that are here on earth, it's temporary. It's going to be destroyed. It, it's, it don't mean nothing. We need to be setting our things on the things that, he, that are eternal. And that's why it's important to work on our relationship with God. You know, um, don't worry about the things we could have here. Worry about the things we could have in heaven. So, so we need to set our minds on those things. And, that, and that's the first step in living a, a Christian life. It says, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. So it, it's not condemning you for what you've done in the past. It's saying, okay, look, you used to walk in these ways. And we shouldn't look at people funny who do walk in those ways who haven't found Christ. Those are the people we're supposed to reach. So we shouldn't think it odd that they don't live the way we do. We live the life we live because we found Christ. We're here to help them find Christ. Which means we can't live the way we once lived. Because that's living for ourselves and not Christ. And our lives are now God's. We're children of God. It says, but now you must rid yourself of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarians or Scythians, slaves or free, but Christ is all and in all. 
Therefore, God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive them as the Lord forgave you. So it reminds us to bear with each other. You know, that means that, hey, sometimes we're going to want to just really knock somebody out. They're going to get on our nerves, our last nerve, and we just don't want to put up with them anymore. We're done with them. We're sick of it. No, we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to bear with them, to show them that love, to forgive them as God forgave us. And when we were forgiven, we hadn't yet wanted to turn to God. He forgave us while we were still out in our sin, still out doing wrong, when we didn't deserve it. And we're supposed to show that same kind of forgiveness. And that can be hard as a human, real hard. But that's when I take you back to verse 1 and 2. To set your thing, set your mind on the things that are above. Not on earthly things. Set your mind on Christ. Because if you're setting your mind on the things above, then you won't be focused on whatever hurt it is that you're having a hard time forgiving. And it makes it easier to forgive it. But if you're focusing on those things, you're not focusing on the things above. It says, and all these virtues put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. We are here to be thankful. And it says to go on and sing hymns and dance and, and praise God and let that song, the, the spirit, minister to you. The song, of, the spiritual song, you know. And if you want that, if you want that peace that that you could have no matter what's going on in your life, there's only one way to get it, and that's through the Lord. That peace that surpasses all understanding is only found through the Holy Spirit. And there's only one way to receive the Holy Spirit. And that's by accepting Christ Jesus. You see, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him, that's anybody, it don't matter who you are, what you've done, or where you've been, Anybody that believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He wants you to come as you are. He don't want to wait for you to get perfect like some people try to preach. He wants you to come as you are. Have a heart that's willing to change. He says, because he did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He didn't come to condemn us because he knows that we all fall short. He came here to show us the way out. To show us that love. John 3.36 says, He that believes in the Son has everlasting life. But he that believes not, God's wrath remains upon him. And God's wrath is the wages of sin is death. And that's an eternal death in the lake of fire. That constant torment and pain that you don't want. It wasn't created for you. It was created for the devil and his demons. So all you got to do is be willing to give God your life. To believe. Romans 10.9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. You see, your forgiveness is not too late for you. It was paid for over 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. And all you got to do is be willing to believe. So, if you haven't started a relationship with Jesus Christ, I recommend that you do it today. It makes an eternity a difference. God bless you all. Have a good night.